Hello, I'm Betsy Ross, and welcome to Healthline. Today we'll talk with one of the area's leading experts on weight loss surgery. Dr. Dwayne Smith will explain this very successful medical procedure, helping so many suffering from obesity. We're also going to meet a woman who has taken her vocation as a pharmacist and turned it into her avocation, or as she calls it, her medical ministry. Rosanna Ide is co-founder of the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy. That's all next and more on Healthline, presented by the Northern Kentucky Medical Society. According to recent reports by the U.S. Bureau of Census, approximately one-third of the American adult population is obese. Obesity is the second leading cause of preventable death behind cigarette smoking. My first guest today, Dr. Dwayne Smith of Advanced Bariatric Centers, is here to explain gastric bypass surgery and how it can change the lives of those who are morbidly obese. Dr. Smith, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Betsy. Let's talk first about the term morbid obesity. What does that mean? Morbid obesity is defined as uh, body mass index greater than 40. Uh, a quick way to define that is uh, the weight in kilograms divided by the uh, uh, height in meters squared. More commonly, it's easy. It works out to about 100 pounds overweight. Why is being that obese such a health risk? The health risks are all of the comorbidities um, related to the obesity, and, and the, the main ones are adult onset diabetes, high blood pressure or hypertension. Uh, sleep apnea, and as well, all of the different kinds of arthritis involving joints, backs, knees, hips, ankles, etc. Is there a group that's more prone to morbid obesity than others? Probably every ethnic group has, has some degree of that. Uh, uh, as well, probably we see a little more of this in women than in men. Let's talk about what can be done about it. We hear a lot about the surgical options. What are the surgical treatments for this? There are two main operations. Historically, uh, Ruy gastric bypass has been the most effective. That can be done both open and laparoscopically, more commonly done laparoscopic uh, these days. As well, there's a newer procedure uh, called the laparoscopic adjusted gastric band that's also being done more frequently. And we're going to be talking about that in just a minute, but first we have some animation. If you could walk us through the process of just sure. exactly what this procedure is and how the patient is affected. Okay. As the video shows, it can be done in, with open or more commonly laparoscopically, about six small incisions, um, instruments inserted into the abdomen. Uh, this is now a view inside the abdomen. There's going to be a small a uh, gastric pouch made proximally, about an ounce in size, and then uh, the intestine will be divided distally uh, to swing a loop of, of bowel up to the uh, pouch uh, so the distal stomach won't be used any longer uh, functionally. The intestine now you're seeing uh, connected, the food now, uh, the route shown uh, through the small pouch into the intestine. So if I think that I would be a candidate for either this or that kind of surgery, tell us about first the band, and then we'll talk about exactly what the procedures are if I think that I'm interested in that. Band something that's typically done laparoscopically. It can be placed through a trocar, and then once inside the abdomen, it's, it's connected and uh, then snapped into place. Um, it... Um, uh, then uh, goes around the upper part of the stomach and restricts the amount of fluid, food that can be eaten uh, very much uh, as the small gastric pouch. There's not the element of malabsorption that there is with the gastric bypass, so the weight loss tends to be a little bit less. And is that becoming more popular now? Uh, with many patients, it's, it's good for lower body mass index patients um, and uh, maybe women that are in childbearing years that are thinking of having children. So if I think that I'm a candidate for this, what do I do as a patient? First, you're going to have a um, you know, basic physical exam and, and evaluation. You're going to see a dietitian and talk about dietary habits, which, of course, are going to change after mm -hmm. the surgery, and also uh, uh, you know, some nutritional counseling. So let's say I am a good candidate. You decide that I could go through one or the other of these procedures. 
afterwards. I think we always think that this is going to be just a magic bullet. We see the high-profile people like the Al Ropers or Notre Dame football coach Charlie Weiss who have gone through procedures like this. How about afterwards? Then what do I do as a patient to make sure that I stay healthy and this really works? Well, this is going to be a tool to help you, and it's about a third of where you want to go with the weight loss. And the other pieces are the change in dietary habits and also exercise. Every, everybody needs, and I sort of say it's just like the maintenance on your car. You really have to do the exercise piece. What's my recovery time? About two to four weeks for a laparoscopic procedure, four to six weeks for an open procedure as far as getting back to work. And we must say that it is surgery, so there are always inherent risks. In Potential that. complications, as you'd expect with any operative procedure. So your success rate, first of all, I guess, what do you consider a success? And what is the success rate with this? With a gastric bypass, you can expect to lose 60 to 80 percent of the excess weight. Uh, with a lap band, probably a little less, 40 to 60 percent of the excess weight. So again, if it's 100 pounds overweight, 40 to 60 pounds over a period of a year or 18 months. Uh, and again, with the gastric bypass, more like 60 to 80 pounds or more, depending on how much more overweight you would be. And we have some dramatic photos, I think, of a couple of your patients who have undergone these procedures. And, and I think you would have to consider them successes. The, they're uh, successful. These are motivated folks. They follow the exercise uh, regimens. Uh, they've got productive lives, more productive than, than before. Uh, the lady shown here uh, is now a black belt karate. I think she's in one of her outfits there you saw, and, and a musician as well. So. Both uh, uh, have had, uh, you know, the kinds of results they were looking for, and of course they very closely follow the exercise regimen expected. We mentioned that if you are interested in this, of course, see a doctor about this. But not everybody is a good candidate for this. The main issue really is if you're a candidate for surgery or not, and, and really the main thing we have to look at, as well as the overall situation, is cardiac issues in terms of making the surgery safe. And, of course, if you are interested in any of this, we have a couple of websites you can go to. You can go to obesityhelp.com or you can go to advancedbariatriccenter.com for more information. Dr. Smith, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Betsy. And coming up next, we'll be back with Medical Minutes right after this break. Are you looking for an exciting career opportunity in the dynamic communications industry? Do you have a sales, customer service, or technology background? If so, Insight invites you to check out our team today. Visit our website at www.insightcom.com for a list of all our open positions. Insight offers excellent benefits including free cable and discounted internet. Email your resume to nkyjobs at insightcom.com or stop by our Florence office and fill out an application today. A great soul ballad is something very special. It's so much more than just a song you sing. It's music that gets deep inside of you. And now you can check out the complete 10 CD classic soul ballads collection for 30 days for just $9.95. Even better, when you use your credit card, you'll get free shipping and handling, a savings of nearly $15. So order now with your credit card. And for just $9.95, bring all 10 CDs, 144 hits into your home. If it isn't the best collection you've ever heard, just send it back and owe nothing more. The classic Soul Ballad collection is, to say the least, very, very special. And I know you're going to love it as much as I do. I'm Peebo Bryson. Please, enjoy the music. Call 1-800-308-3900 for the classic Soul Ballads. That's 1-800-308-3900. Call now. And now for our Healthline Medical Minutes. There's some good news now from the American Cancer Society. It recently reports that the FDA has approved the first vaccine to present the human papilloma virus. This vaccine protects against infection from the four strains of that virus. 
Gardasil, developed by Merck, is a major health breakthrough since it is the first vaccine specifically designed to prevent cancer, that from the American Cancer Society. This vaccine has been approved for 9- to 26-year-old girls and women. The HPV virus is responsible for most cases of cervical cancer. According to the World Health Organization, cervical cancer kills more than 288,000 women worldwide each year. This year in the U.S. alone, it's expected that it will affect more than 9,700 women and cause the deaths of about 3,700. Now that the vaccine is FDA approved, a separate federal panel will convene to decide the parameters of the immunization schedule. And mom may have been right about drinking your milk. Some researchers are predicting that the world will experience an epidemic of hip fractures in the next few decades. Orthopedic experts believe that education and awareness of osteoporosis prevention can slow this trend. Calcium-rich diets early in life, use of bone loss drugs later in life, and swift treatment of minor fractures can help reduce the risk of a hip fracture. And on a lighter note, did you know that music therapy is becoming an important tool for those recovering and recuperating from illness? According to the American Music Therapy Association, music and its healing influence have been around since ancient times, but began to be taken seriously during World War I and World War II, when it was evident that when musicians visited the hospitalized veterans, they responded favorably, easing their physical and emotional trauma. Music therapy sessions can take many forms, listening to or playing music, and they can help reduce pain, alleviate nausea, and improve sleep. According to a recent report, all patients receive some level of benefits of symptom reduction. So, whether you prefer the Beatles, Rosemary Clooney, or Chopin, remember to keep a song in your heart for an easier recovery. That's the Medical Minutes for this edition of Healthline. We'll be back right after this break. I'm Patrick Crowley. I've been covering news and politics in Northern Kentucky for over two decades. I'm the political writer for the Kentucky Inquirer and host of On the Record on ICN6. Every week I find out what's going on behind the news from the people making the news. The governor, congressmen, city officials, county officials, controversial figures, business leaders. There's nothing off the record when they're on the record. Well, I can't walk. I can walk, but not very far. I can't even stand anymore. And it gave me no freedom. If you or a loved one suffer from limited mobility, we have incredible news. Now you may qualify for your very own new Invacare power chair or scooter at little or no cost to you. Call Mobility Products Unlimited right now to begin your free pre-qualification process. Invacare's powered mobility products are comfortable, stylish, easy to maneuver, and go anywhere. And yes, you can get back out there, too, with Invacare. So pick up the phone and call Mobility Products right now, risk-free. Their friendly specialists handle all the paperwork and make it fast and easy to begin the pre-qualification process for your very own Invacare power chair or scooter. You could get yours within just days. There's no pressure, no obligation, no cost for the call. And your satisfaction is guaranteed. So call 1-800-913-5854 right now. That's 1-800-913-5854. Friendly mobility specialists are standing by. The Milson Walker Financial Group, full-service financial advisors, can be seen each weekday morning on the chat room on ICN6. Tune in as Robert Walker or Barry Milson talk about the current ups and downs of the stock market, as well as financial news from around the world and what it may mean to you. The stock market report from Milson Walker Financial Group can be seen Monday through Friday on the chat room, 1025 a.m. on ICN6. Welcome back. My next guest is an amazing lady who saw that some residents in her northern Kentucky community were in need of assistance. They could not afford their prescriptions. So she took up the challenge and co-founded the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy, a pharmacy providing free prescriptions to those who qualify. Rosanna is joining us in studio today. We'll talk to her in just a moment. But first, a quick look at the community pharmacy. In 2002, 
The St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy opened its doors for business at the outlet on Crescent Springs Road. The mission of this nonprofit charitable pharmacy is to provide necessary medications free of charge to those unable to pay. It serves clients in an outreach program that extends over 10 counties in northern Kentucky. The community pharmacy is staffed by a few paid employees and by many dedicated volunteers. The pharmacy's inventory is maintained from samples of medications provided by local doctors and pharmaceutical companies. But some of the drugs, like insulin, must be purchased. Each month, over 1,000 northern Kentuckians depend on the services of the community pharmacy to provide them the medications that they would otherwise be unable to afford. And clients, like Carol, are grateful for the community pharmacy. We, we couldn't make it because we don't draw that much money on our Social Security. I heard about the program that they were going to have, and my husband and I are both on disability, and so we came up. You had to be, have a certain income. You had to um, qualify for, um, you know, with every, everything that they gave you. You had to bring all your bills and everything. My life, it really has changed it a lot because there's medicines that, you know, that I take that I, it's, an, it's a necessity, and they make sure, you know, that we have our medicine. And if it wasn't for St. Vincent, I, I would never be able to afford my medicine. And Rosanna is here now to tell us more about the community pharmacy. And Rosanna, it seems like such a terrific idea. You saw the need, but how did you get the ball rolling? How did you actually get it started? Well, in 1999, the council president had gone to the uh, National Convention in California and brought back a packet about our prototype, the pharmacy we modeled after in Baton Rouge, and asked if we could make that become a reality in the Diocese of Covington. So it was kind of a no-brainer. When you got started, what was the outreach? How many areas did you start serving, and how many areas do you serve now? We focused mainly in Boone, Campbell, and Kenton originally, but the Diocese of Covington is a huge geographic region. There's 14 counties, so we have made it to about 10 or 11 of those counties. And how many prescriptions approximately have you filled so far? We opened in April of 2002. We've dispensed 107,000 prescriptions to 2,200 clients, and we put an average wholesale value of $6.7 million mm. on it. Mercy. How did the community pharmacy get its funding now and when you got started, and what role did the North Kentucky Medical Society play in in really getting this started? About the time we were we were about to get started, they were um, looking for ways to help their injured clients. So we, at a, a drug rep meeting, Dr. Chris Heeb and Neil Moser and I kind of met, and uh, we went to the Medical Society and they gave us startup funding, and so we now take care of their injured clients for them. Mm -hmm. What types of prescriptions do you handle? Mostly uh, di major disease states, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, mental illness. Um, the charitable pharmacy law pro prohibits us from charging our clients and from dispensing controlled substances because we are a Catholic or organization. We don't mm -hmm. do birth control pills. Okay, so what's the process of um, adding clients or if uh, a patient thinks that he or she is eligible for this? What do they do? They, come, they have to come in and be seen, sit, sit through an interview. We have to have documentation of family income and family expenses. For those that can't come in in the rural counties, we actually do an outreach program on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. What's your typical client? A uh, typical client is a senior citizen uh, who's just worked hard all their lives, owned their home, they've done the right thing, and now they have medication that is just several hundred dollars a month and they can't afford it. Do you get referrals? Um, do you have walk-ins? How does that handle? We have referrals. We have walk-ins. We limit our interviews to uh, 10 per day, which is twice a week. The pharmacy, as we saw in the video, you have shelves and shelves and shelves of inventory. How do you keep that going if you serve so many clients? How do you get those shelves stocked? We couldn't do it without the doctors in northern Kentucky. I put out faxes and um, go in around on Fridays and collect samples from their offices. How about the volunteers who work? An amazing group of volunteers. We have 80 to 100 volunteers that do everything from help and fill prescriptions to screen the clients to sort the medication. Uh, the volunteer hours equal our payroll. Tell us about some of the accomplishments, some of the honors that the community pharmacy has, has garnered so far. Uh, well, we were the first ever nonprofit winner of the Northern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce 
Small Business Success Award. That really surprised us because we're so new. Mm -hmm. um, we we hate awards, you know. <laughs> we feel like everybody would be doing what we're doing if they were given the same chance. But we were Outstanding Women of the Year and Mental Health Association Awards. We get awards and a lot of media, and it's really embarrassing because we would do it. I think anyone would do what we're doing. Sure. And if you would like more information or if you'd like to find out how you can help as well, we have information to contact them on Crescent Springs Road in Covington with the phone number there. Always looking for donations and always looking always. for volunteers. Always. I'm going to die begging. <laughs> <laughs> Rosanna, it's a, a wonderful project that you have there. Thank you so much for sharing uh, your ideas and thoughts about how you have been helping the communities in northern Kentucky and uh, some of the patients who would know longer be able to afford that kind of medication. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for helping us get the word out. And after the break, we have doctors answering your medical questions in our house calls segment. Stay with us. Are you looking for an exciting career opportunity in the dynamic communications industry? Do you have a sales, customer service, or technology background? If so, Insight invites you to check out our team today. Visit our website at www.insightcom.com for a list of all our open positions. Insight offers excellent benefits including free cable and discounted internet. Email your resume to nkyjobs at insightcom.com or stop by our Florence office and fill out an application today. You're stuck on a treadmill. You're making minimum payments on your credit cards, and you just don't get anywhere. Let Consolidated Credit tell you the truth. When credit card companies are charging high interest, it's virtually impossible to pay off your debt. Let's say you owe $5,000 and your rate is 21%. Of your $100 minimum payment, $87 is interest. It'll take you over 33 years to pay off that debt. Call Consolidated Credit. They'll get the credit card companies to reduce or eliminate your interest. Get off the treadmill. Get on with your life. Call Consolidated Credit. They're the freedom people. Call now. 1-800-530-5706. 530-5706. Consolidated credit. When credit card debt is the problem, they're the solution. Miss a minute in Hollywood, who's with who, wearing what? E! News wants to hook you up. Come on, you don't want to hear the latest headlines from your friend. You want the latest first. So we're going to give you two chances to watch E! News weeknights at 7 and 11. So what's happening as we speak? A lot. One more. Watch E! News weeknights at 7 and 11, Eastern and Pacific. We love it too. E! News weeknights at 7 and 11, only on E! Insight Channel 64. Welcome back. Our house call segment gives you, the viewer, an opportunity to ask questions about your medical concerns. And we have doctors from the Northern Kentucky Medical Society ready to answer. Our first question comes from Debbie in Villa Hills, and she writes, I'm 58 years old, and I've been noticing age spots on the tops of my hands and my arms. Is there anything that I can do to get rid of them? Here is what dermatologist Dr. Scott Meltner has to say. Well, Debbie, I think that first and foremost, it's important that you have these uh, brown spots evaluated by a physician to be certain of the diagnosis. Most likely, these are going to turn out to be lentigines or sun freckles on the backs of the hands, and there are a whole host of potential modalities which could be used to lighten these and improve the cosmetic appearance. These things range from the application of liquid nitrogen, which is a freezing spray, to topical treatment with an acid called trichloroacetic acid, uh, to lightening agents such as something that contains hydroquinone or a bleaching agent. Uh, and lastly, there are some pigmented lesion lasers which are quite effective in lightening brown spots. Another important point to make with regard to this is that in order to prevent new brown spots from forming, it's critically important that you do wear sunscreen on a daily basis, and I would recommend something with at least an SPF of 15. Another question now. Joan from Hebron writes, I keep reading that frequent hand washing would prevent a lot of illness. How much truth is there to that claim? Well, we asked general practitioner Dr. Nancy Swikert to answer. 
That's a very good question, Joan, because the number one uh, thing to prevent getting sick is good hand washing and frequent hand washing. Many of us don't wash our hands enough and we don't wash them long enough. You actually are supposed to really lather up your hands and get them good and soapy and do that for 10 to 15 seconds, which is quite a long time. Especially if you're preparing food in the kitchen or handling food or if you've petted your animals or if you've been outside and touching surfaces like the handrails on a bus or the handrails like in the grocery store or the escalator, and then uh, if you've been to the bathroom, obviously, and if there's someone sick in your house, you need to wash your hands more, more frequent and longer. Now, there's been a lot of talk about the hand sanitizers, and they are very effective on killing germs. Some of the hospitals and doctor's offices are even using those in place of or with hand washing to make the germ control better. And our final question is from Charla in Latonia, and she asks, I'm 65 years old, and I have stopped getting yearly pelvic exams and pap smears. My sister thinks I should still be getting them yearly. What do you think? So we went to gynecologist Dr. Mike Gerwe for an answer. For patients like Charla, we recommend that you continue to see your physician yearly for pap smears, especially if you have a cervix. That means that you have not had a hysterectomy. Not only can we make sure that you're not having any problems with your cervix, but we can also check to make sure that your bones are in good health without risk of osteoporosis and that you continue to get your mammograms. We would not like to see patients get breast cancer, as breast cancer is more common in women who are in their 60s and 70s. Good advice, and thank you, doctors, for all your information and your insights. And if you have a medical question that you would like answered on an upcoming Healthline program, I'll be sure to send your questions to the email address listed on your screen. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Healthline. We'd like to thank all of our guests, Dr. Dwayne Smith, Dr. Scott Neltner, Dr. Nancy Swikert, and Dr. Mike Gerwey. A special thank you to Rosanna Eit for her work with the Community Pharmacy. We hope you'll join us again for our next program when we'll talk about those medical issues that will help keep you and your family healthy. Goodbye for now. I'm Betsy Ross, and this has been Healthline, presented by the Northern Kentucky Medical Society. Well, I can't walk. If you or a loved one suffer from limited mobility, we have incredible news. Now you may qualify for your very own new Invacare power chair or scooter at little or no cost to you. Call Mobility Products Unlimited right now to begin your free pre-qualification process. And yes, you can get back out there too with Invacare. So call now risk-free. Friendly mobility specialists handle all the paperwork. You could get your Invacare power chair or scooter within just days. Call 1-800-621-5072. Hi, I'm Jackie Sear, the host for Job Connections on ICN6. The Bank of Kentucky sponsors this weekly look at job openings in northern Kentucky. Each week, we feature three guests who highlight the current openings they have available. One constant is the Kentucky Office of Employment and Training. Every program has an employment specialist discussing real job openings. Job Connections Daily, only on ICN6. I'm Patrick Crowley. I've been covering news and politics in Northern Kentucky for over two decades. I'm the political writer for the Kentucky Inquirer and host of On the Record on ICN6. 
Every week I find out what's going on behind the news from the people making the news. The governor, congressmen, city officials, county officials, controversial figures, business leaders. There's nothing off the record when they're on the record.